Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for City of Greensboro news and information. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development has awarded the City of Greensboro a Lead Hazard Reduction in Healthy Homes grant in the amount of $5 million. This will fund the remediation of deteriorated lead-based paint in up to 125 homes, as well as limited home repair services over the next four years. This project, which begins later this year, is available to income-qualified homeowners and affordable properties. The focus is on homes where children younger than six and or pregnant women reside or frequently visit. It's important to note babies and toddlers are at high risk of developmental impact from the effects of lead poisoning. To be placed on an interest list for lead remediation under this grant funding, send an email to the Greensboro Housing and Neighborhood Development Department. Include your name, phone number, and email address. The city's ongoing Lead Safe Housing Grant Program has remediated nearly 1,100 homes in low-income areas since the early 2000s. This initiative has eliminated critical health hazards that disproportionately impact black and brown families in our community. For more information about the Lead Safe Greensboro program, visit the city's website. The Greensboro Public Library is adding new educational resources for personal enrichment, skilled trades training, and small business resources. The library's Bridge to Learn program includes free access to the following resources. Coursera works with universities and other organizations to offer online courses, certifications, and degrees in a variety of subjects. Earn career credentials and professional certificates, get a head start on a college degree, acquire in-demand skills, or just learn something fun. Skill Mill offers more than 450 hours of interactive online skilled trades courses, including HVAC, plumbing, electrical, solar, and maintenance. With 3D simulations and training led by experts, Skill Mill is considered faster and more convenient than traditional learning. Gale Business Entrepreneurship covers all aspects of starting and opening a business. Gale Business Plan Builder offers tools needed to move through the entire business development life cycle. And Gale Legal Forms helps to create accurate, reliable legal documents with North Carolina-specific forms used by law firms. Many of the forms are available in Word and Adobe formats. Simply fill in the blanks. For more information about the Bridge to Learn program, visit the city's website. Creative Greensboro is paying tribute to the legacy of the historic Magnolia House. The Downtown Arts Program features artwork by special commission artist Joyce Williams. Her original oil painting titled Sweet Magnolia features famous entertainers who performed at the historic hotel, highlighting Ray Charles and Tina Turner to Count Basie and Gladys Knight. A 10-foot by 20-foot vinyl reproduction of Sweet Magnolia has been installed on the wall of the City Council Chamber in the Melvin Municipal Office Building. It will be on display until July of next year. The original painting is displayed at the historic Magnolia House on loan for one year to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Green Book Hotel. The Downtown Arts Program features and supports the work of Greensboro-based artists and enhances the city's built environment with original artwork. Williams was selected as the Special Commission Artist by a committee comprised of members of the Cultural Affairs Commission and the city's Communications and Marketing Department. For more information about artist Joyce Williams, visit the city's website. Cone Health has partnered with the city to share a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Following these tips is an easy way to help each of us improve our quality of life. Let's take a moment to check out today's news for your health. Over one in three Americans ages 18 and older have prediabetes. What is it and how can you reduce your risk? Prediabetes is when you have a blood glucose or blood sugar level which is higher than normal but not quite high enough to be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. You can reduce your risk of prediabetes and prevent it from further into type 2 diabetes by several things. One, you can eat a well-balanced diet which includes fruits, vegetables, 
calcium rich foods, whole grains, and protein foods. Also, you could exercise at least 150 minutes a week, which is equivalent to 30 minutes a day, five days a week. And you can also work with a registered dietitian who will help establish long lasting healthy habits which are specific for you. Individuals who are at a higher risk of becoming pre-diabetic are those that are ages 45 years or older who also have a BMI or body mass index of 25 or greater. Also, individuals who are 45 years old or younger who have the BMI of 25 or higher along with high blood pressure or high cholesterol or history of type 2 diabetes in their family or have a history of inactivity. So there are certain races and ethnicities who are more at risk. African Americans, Native Americans, Asian Americans, Latino, and Pacific Islanders. There are no clear signs and symptoms of prediabetes, which is why it's important to have routine visits with your primary care physician because you may have it and not know it. When you go to your primary care provider, there are several tests that can be done to diagnose prediabetes. One test is a hemoglobin A1C and having a value between 5.7 and 6.4, or having a fasting blood glucose test done and your value is between 100 and 125 milligrams per deciliter, or having an oral glucose tolerance test done where your two hour blood glucose level reads between 140 and 199 milligrams per deciliter. So one thing that comes up a lot with, especially with the exercise, you know, you don't have to do 30 minutes in one lump sum. You can do 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there, as long as you're getting that 30 minutes within that 24 hour period. And that can be anything that gets your heart rate pumping. So if it's taking the stairs instead of taking the elevator, you don't have to make a total lifestyle change at one time. You can take small steps by, if, for instance, if you're skipping meals or if you miss breakfast or miss lunch, try incorporating that meal so that you're getting at least three meals a day. Also too, when you go to the shopping center, instead of hunting or hunting down that first parking space, you can park farther away, get in some extra steps. It is proven that when you make interventions such as lifestyle change, including changing your eating habits, having a well-balanced diet, increasing your physical activity, you can prolong being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Thank you for joining me. I hope this information has been helpful. To learn more, go to conehealth.com slash diabetes. I am Donetta Floyd. The Greensboro History Museum is taking us back in time for the razzmatazz of the Roaring Twenties. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Greensboro History Museum will kick off a year-long celebration to commemorate its first 100 years of existence. Make plans to attend the Speakeasy Night at the museum, taking place from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Friday, October 25th. Take a step back in time for an evening of live jazz, classic cocktails, hors d'oeuvres, glitz, and razzmatazz. Come dressed in your best Roaring Twenties attire and enter a costume contest. Other activities include card games, a scavenger hunt in the museum galleries, and dance lessons with the cat's pajamas. Admission, which includes a drink ticket, is $50. The celebration runs through 2025 to mark important dates all the way from the organization of the Greensboro Historical Museum Society in 1924 to the opening of the museum on Armistice Day 1925. The Greensboro History Museum is located at 130 Summit Avenue. The Greensboro Human Rights Commission will host Assistant Police Chief Stephanie Martis as the featured speaker. The public is encouraged to attend the Zoom meeting at 6 p.m. on Thursday, November 7th. In this installment of the Commission's Let's Talk series, Chief Martis will address community violence, prevention efforts, and ways to safeguard against it. Chief Martis joined the Greensboro Police Department in 2002 and soon after was named Rookie of the Year. She has served in numerous leadership roles over the past two decades, including her promotion to captain in 2019 and assistant chief last year. 
Martis oversees the Support Bureau, which includes the Operational Support Division and Information and Analysis Division. For more information about the Human Rights Commission, visit the City's website or contact Commission's Administrator Liz Lennon at 336-373-2038. In response to Hurricane Helene, there are several ways for the community to continue assisting our neighbors in western North Carolina. The American Red Cross is accepting monetary donations, blood donations, and volunteers. Instructions for how to make a donation are available on the agency's website. The North Carolina Disaster Relief Fund is accepting donations to help with the unmet needs of hurricane victims. Contributions can be made online through a secure link. You can also mail a check to the North Carolina Disaster Relief Fund at 20312 Mail Service Center in Raleigh, 27699. Samaritan's Purse is accepting monetary donations and volunteers. The agency is assisting victims in multiple states impacted by Hurricane Helene. If you are a victim of price gouging, you can file a complaint. The price gouging law went into effect after Governor Roy Cooper declared a state of emergency. To report an incident of price gouging, visit the website for the North Carolina Department of Justice. Businesses strive to move their companies forward. This involves actively seeking bold new ideas and solutions to everyday challenges, such as talent recruitment and retention. Coming up after the break, we'll check in with Guilford Works to spotlight a solution for job seekers and employers. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Apprenticeship is an industry-driven career pathway where employers develop and prepare their future workforce by combining customized on-the-job training with related classroom instruction. Joining me now to tell us about the Gear Up program is Joyce Rice. She is the Strategic Partnerships and Initiatives Manager for Guilford Works. Hello, Joyce. Welcome back. Hi, Carla. Thanks for having me. Always good to see you. Now Always for, great seeing you. Uh, thank you. For folks who aren't familiar, tell us about the Gear Up ASAP program. Sure. So Guilford Works Gear Up ASAP program is the Adult Specialized Apprenticeship Program. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now going five years strong and really excited about enhancing. It is an apprenticeship uh, sponsored program through Apprenticeship NC where we are able to help individuals get into careers faster, yes. earn credentials, and earn while they learn. Fantastic. The great thing also is that employers are able to tap into untapped labor markets mm -hmm. and find, hard to fill, uh, find talent for hard to fill positions. It's nice to hear the word apprenticeship. So you really push this out through different events. You have one coming up called Launching the Path for a Future-Proof Workforce with Apprenticeships. So what will that entail? Well, we're really looking forward to this event. We are going to kind of reintroduce our program, uh, really celebrate the five years uh, since its inception, mm -hmm. uh, but also bring our stakeholders and our community together to really learn about what this program offers. Mm -hmm. uh, also learn about the industry, occupation tracks, get some facts and data around credentialing and how uh, we can combine on-the-job training with credentialing as a tool mm -hmm. uh, that employers can use as a strategy to fill those hard uh, to find uh, skills. Excellent. And with an apprentice, you're really kind of learning as you go. They bring you on but teach you what you need to know so you can be successful. So what would you say is new on the horizon for Gear Up? Well, we're very ex excited in that we are really looking at expanding. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to be expanding more into our healthcare tracks. We really are excited about our skilled trade mm -hmm. tracks with regards to welding and construction. Mm -hmm. And we are really looking at tapping into our reentry community. Uh, there has been an ongoing dialogue with Guilford Works with our uh, reentry work that we've been doing, um, our Fresh Start initiative. Yes. And we are looking to expand and make sure we find tangible opportunities for individuals who are just as involved to find faster tracks to permanent careers, to earning a higher income and reaching economic stability. So we are going to be discussing that as well in this event. Okay. And is there a specific target market or ideal participant for the apprenticeship program? 
Well, the beautiful thing about this program is we are able to be inclusive with our employers. Mm -hmm. They really are the leaders in this effort. The employers and industry really leads and drives what those industry needs are, what those occupational needs. And with that, we're able to draw career seekers that have an interest in those industries, as well as our educational partners. So we really have a, a broad, conclusive community of stakeholders mm -hmm. that really can benefit from this event and this conversation. Perfect. And who are some of the players that may be involved with the event? Absolutely. So we are very excited about none other than Apprenticeship NC. Mm -hmm. They write and structure and get approved these apprenticeship occupations for us. So they will uh, be presenting information. Uh, the Forge, who uh, is a partner with us with a pre-apprenticeship program with welding, uh, GTCC, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Guilford County Schools. And we're looking for a host of others. We have a few select employer partners that are going to be discussing some of their success with us as well. Fantastic. Well, those are really great key partners very visible and very connected and wanting to see folks get on that path of their career. Absolutely. If anyone is watching and they want more information either about the launch event or Gear Up in general, where should they go? Well, you can actually find information about the apprenticeship program on our guilfortworks.org site. Um, this event should be on our calendar, which will be guilfortworks.org slash events. Okay. Well, thank you, Joyce. It's always good to see you. We know you're on the go constantly coordinating yes. and facilitating these great events. We do hope you'll come back. Keep us posted on other events taking place. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Stay tuned for some interesting and useful information about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That segment is coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. One way to stay informed about decisions that impact you and our city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of the month. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. The city council meetings take place in the Katie Dorsett Council Chamber on level two of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. The public is allowed in person, but only in a limited capacity. Those who choose not to be in the building can participate virtually. The Greensboro City Council meetings are broadcast right here on GTN. The meetings are also streamed live on the city's website and on Roku. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. Fall is in the air and the colorful array of leaves are beginning to blink at the ground. Be sure to follow the city's new yard waste collection rules. Use the 95 gallon gray cart to collect your fall yard waste and leaves. Additional leaves can be collected in paper yard waste bags, bundle branches and sticks with natural twine. Up to 10 bags or bundles will be collected from the curb each week throughout the year. From November to February, crews will collect up to 15 paper bags and bundles of yard waste from the curb. You can also leave the leaves on the ground. Leaves provide habitats for many different species. Last but not least, you can compost or mulch your leaves. Call the contact center to purchase an additional 95-gallon gray cart for $65. Avoid placing leaves on the curb, right-of-way, or in the street. Burning yard waste, including leaves, is not permitted within Greensboro city limits. This includes the use of fire pits. Download the GSO Collects app to receive a personalized collection schedule so you never miss your collection day. For more information, visit the city's website. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. But first, prepare to mark your calendars for the places to go and things to do on the town. I'm Dave. Here are some special events happening this week on the town. The second annual Gate City Blues Festival is October 25th at the Tanger Center, featuring the likes of King George, Tucka, Pokey Bear, West Love, Fred Palmer Jr., and Jay Wan. This event promises musical storytelling with stark emotion and a revolving reality check. Learn more and get tickets online at tangercenter.com. Speakeasy Night at the Greensboro History Museum is October 25th. The event kicks off the museum's 100th anniversary. 
be a part of a swell evening of jazz, cocktails, heavy hors d'oeuvres, and razzmatazz, plus a scavenger hunt and games that evoke a spirit of the 1920s. Learn more online at greensboro-nc.gov. Come haunt the Hemp Hill Branch Library for an afternoon of not-too-scary fun, October 26th. Wear your most monstrous costume and enjoy thrilling tales, creepy crafts, plus candy. Learn more about this free event for kids at greensborolibrary.org. All four-legged and two-legged friends are invited to a howl a celebration October 27th at Country Park. Don your best costume and join Guilford Animal Resources for this extra special trick or treat event. There will be both dog and human treats. No registration is required. Visit the city's website at greensboro-nc.gov for details. Stay tuned to FYI Weekly for more happenings on the town. Welcome back. The city of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents, and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. The Greensboro Department of Transportation installed bike lanes on Lindsay Street between Murrow Boulevard and Bessemer Avenue. This pilot program is designed to add more bike lanes citywide. The project, in collaboration with North Carolina A&T State University, reduces the four- and five-lane sections on Lindsay down to three lanes. The temporary bike lanes will remain in place until next spring when city roads are scheduled to be resurfaced. If the pilot program is successful, permanent bike lanes will be added next year. Hannah Cockburn, director of the Greensboro Transportation Department, said adding a variety of transportation options such as new bicycle lanes is an important step in creating a safer, more accessible street for all road users. This also supports multimodal transportation. The pilot program supports the GSO 2040 comprehensive plan goals of becoming car optional, prioritizing sustainability, and building community connections. To learn more about the project and to access feedback surveys, visit gsostreets.com. Coming up after the break is our Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the Greensboro Fire Department. Several accomplishments are published in the Fire Department's 2023-24 Annual Report. Continued growth of services and the addition of fire stations is a significant milestone that underscores the city's commitment to providing top-notch fire protection and emergency services to all residents within the city limits. The annual report outlines plans for new fire trucks, explains how data is used to inform decisions to address the city's growth, lists fire and rescue statistics, and shows how Greensboro Fire connects with residents and community organizations. The annual report is available for viewing on the city's website. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Alexa users can subscribe to our five-minute flash briefings, which airs on 90.1 FM, 100.7 FM, and 90.5 FM. Be sure to download both weekly podcasts, Talk City Greensboro and Talk City in Espanol. Plus, GTN is streaming on Roku. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.